Hi y'all, uh, my name is uh, Stepan Jevedinovic. I teach new media and video game design at the Hive New Media Studio at SAC, um, an after school art program in San Antonio. If you want to find out more about SAC, uh, check out sac.org. Uh, these lessons are primarily for my students who are teens of all ages. Uh, and by that I mean literal teens of all ages, as that is the age range of my students, uh, but there's no reason any figurative teens of all ages couldn't learn about code through this series. There's a lot of tutorials out there to do uh, a step-by-step -step process for creating a complete game, and they're great, and you can learn a lot from those. Uh, but I've noticed that most of my students find it hard to apply what they've learned from all that retyping on something wholly their own um, and from scratch. The goal with these videos is to get you to a point where you can uh, play with code, where you can be expressive in code, doodle with it, experiment, reverse engineer other people's games, um, make little animations or simulations or visual toys or small games. Sort of like baby's first demo scene demo or like baby's first dozen demo scene demos. I want to hand you over to the creative process as soon as possible, um, but first we need to outline some basic building blocks of programming that you will assemble to create the more complex uh, widgets. I will also introduce you to a number of those more complex uh, widgets, handy programming patterns, uh, math tricks, and tools that people have figured out as good ways to solve some of the common uh, problems in making games. There's quite a bit of vocabulary to wrap one's mind around. Uh, I'll make a glossary of terms and link it below. Um, if stuff is not clicking, just let it wash over you. Keep going. When you start to grok it better, uh, go back and rewatch the earlier episodes and hopefully it'll kind of click. There will be a bit of math. You shouldn't expect it to be trivially easy. Like, if you're a sixth grader, uh, this might be the first time that you're gonna learn about some uh, concepts, but then you can like show up in class and be all like, look what I know. You know, the, the, the higher you go in, in, in your high school education, the more you will figure out like ways to apply the math that you're learning to make cool things uh, in games. So, Big Great is great. You are probably here because you think so too, or because you're my student and uh, it is the next project. Um, this is what you'll see when you first launch Pico 8. Um, it's just a prompt that tells you it's running Pico 8, um, tells you what version it is, and uh, tells you to type help for help. So let's, uh, let's start by doing that. Let's do install demos. Um, so it will tell you it'll tell you that install demo cards to a demos folder and these are the demo cards that it downloaded, right? Um, cool. Um, what else do we have? Uh, we can we can load things so load and then you put a space and then you type uh, The name of the file you want to load some file name dot p8 right and it will load it or it will not, because the file doesn't exist, right? Um, from here, uh, you can hit escape and go into the uh, editor, right? So if you hit escape again, you're going to go back to this view and you can type some more commands. All right, so this is the, the code editor. Um, here you will be uh, typing, uh, typing different code and then you will go back into this mode of hitting escape and then typing run uh, tells the command to run whatever code is in the editor um, and it'll just type in a uh, jello mold as you can see right above the blinking uh, square because that's what we told it we told it print jello mold and that's the entirety of the program um, we can tell it other things we can tell it to clear the screen and paint it some color let's do red and then print jello mold so let's, uh, let's run that program again. Bam, it did what we told it to, right? So this is where you, you, you type your program. Um, the next tab over 
is the uh, sprite sheet. Um, this is where you do your pixel arts. Um, you can create different kinds of landscapes and characters and uh, different animations and things and it's super cool and, and fun to draw it with. This is your palette. Um, these are the toolbars. It's pretty kind of obvious. Different sprite sheets over here. So you have like an overflow of sprites. Um, the next one over is the map editor. Um, we'll get to that um, at some point as well. Um, this is where you draw your levels and then you can use them however you want. Are they the background for your platformer or are they the, um, the, the world top down Zelda style or whatever. Right, so that's a map. You can zoom out with the mouse wheel, zoom back in. Um, yeah, you hit space and drag around to move. The next one over is the sound editor. Um, this is where you create sound forms or melodies. <laughs> um, and this is the music editor. There's a uh, I'm, I'm totally not going to do anything about these last two. There are so many good uh, tutorials online about making music in Pico 8, and I'm not qualified. Um, I will focus on coding and stuff. So, let's go back to help. Um, there's a bunch of other commands in here. Um, once you made your, your, your super cool uh, game, you of course want to save it. Save super cool game. Hit enter. All right, and it says saved, uh, supercoolgame.p8. Um, here you can also load, super cool. Um, one cool trick, when you start typing uh, your, the name of your game, you don't have to like type the whole thing. You can just type like the first character and hit tab. And if there's nothing else that, that, that has that character, um, like nothing else in that folder that starts with S, or SU or whatever, um, is going to find the only file that's in your safe game folder uh, with that name and just like um, auto-complete it. So tab will auto-complete your, your thing. So you can, you know, make it as long as you need to make it. <laughs> and so this is how you load it. So if we go, go back to help, um, you will see uh, a bunch of other functions. Save, load, um, resume, ls, cd, ls will list all the stuff that's in the folder cd will change the current folder into some other folder and then you can ls and see what's in that uh, folder cd space dot dot to leave the folder and if we list stuff again um, we will see uh, you know that we have entered the folder looked what's inside of that folder left that folder and now we're looking at the outside of that folder. When you have downloaded and unpacked your, your Pico 8, um, you will have a, a couple of other files in there. You will have a license and a pico8.txt. Uh, my students also have uh, some cheat sheets as well um, that I have prepared for them. Uh, I will make sure to link these somewhere. This is the, the, the cheat sheet that's based off of the really great uh, Pico 8 zine series. Uh, I think one of the editions had um, this kind of cheat sheet in the back and it was very useful. So I kind of recreated it and updated it to a newer version. Um, it just lists all of the functions that, that P P in the Pico 8 API and um, uh, reminders for the parameters that they take in. Um, so this is the system stuff. This is the stuff that you type in when Pico 8 first kind of pops up. Um, you know, run, ls, save, load. Um, folder will actually open the, the current folder where you are in the, um, in, 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 inside Pico 8 in your uh, uh, directory structure. 
Um, so um, that's super handy. That's a kind of a new thing, uh, I, I think. <laughs> I did not notice it way back in the day. So yeah, so you can see, see my super cool game here. Super cool game over here. What is this? What is this? Um, super handy because you can you can um, edit your your uh, files in whatever editor you want if this is just like too much for you and you want to be able to see um, <laughs> the code a little bit better because it can get old. But uh, trust me, these, this font gets better with time as you like use it. You start to kind of like figure out the difference between an O and a D, I don't know, D and a zero, there's no zeros anywhere, uh, but you know, like eight and a B <laughs> are pretty similar, but um, it's not impossible to figure out. So the cheat sheet, um, super handy uh, as a sort of a reminder for different functions that are possible. Uh, and you always have to have your documentation um, at the ready. Uh, I never code anything uh, without having uh, my documentation open and my cheat sheet here. Uh, I actually also have a tangible paper version of the cheat sheet um, that I will doodle on. Um, you're free to, you know, print your own, whatever. Um, but yeah, like, uh, it's sometimes good to know that, like, random example, you can set, a, like, a, like, a pixel color at a certain uh, coordinate in the, uh, the, the, the world as, as a developer, you would, like, you know, remember that that is an option that you can just draw on the screen. Um, but you might forget that it's actually P set that's the function that does that. So you would just kind of glance at your, your cheat sheet and see that like, you know, of all the options, which one is the one that I'm looking for? It's probably P set because that's, you know, it makes sense that it's pixel set and it follows a kind of a consistent uh, pattern. Once you kind of like figure out what does what, you will be able to guess where these functions are going. Different sections, it's very well organized and it's organized exactly the same as the uh, documentation. So if you're curious uh, about something, so you're like, huh, there's a print over here in the graphics, even though it deals with text, and there's also a print <laughs> over here in the system, what does that mean? So you would select this here, you would command C or control C um, to copy, and then you will go over here and you say command F or control F to search. You'll notice up here it opened up a little search Field. So I'm going to paste what I'm looking for. I'm looking for print. I want to know more about it. So I'm going to like look it up in the documentation. And that's how you use the documentation. You, you, you shouldn't just open this file and start reading at the top. It is uh, big and comprehensive and it will answer most of your questions that you have about how to do something. Um, but you, you have to have that question before you open it and look for something, right? And so I'm equipped with my questions. So I'm just going to put print in there. Um, and it's going to find the print string file name over a safe to desktop. It's the same exact function that we're looking at over here. And it tells me that print, uh, print a string to the host operating systems console for debugging. Um, you can also give it an optional file name. That's what these uh, brackets mean in both here and here that they're optional parameters. Um, you give it a file name and it will drop it over here, you can save it to the desktop, blah, blah, blah. It tells you a bunch of stuff about print. It's a really handy function. Uh, we'll get back into it when we deal with uh, debugging um, and troubleshooting games. So a lot of the time as you're sitting at home during this Rona and trying to learn to code, you will run into, into glitches and issues and have questions and stuff. Uh, get in the habit of, of, of uh, consulting your documentation this whole series, I see it as, as, as something to uh, help you develop the, uh, the practice of, of coding. And in the practice of coding, it is a good idea to have your cheat sheets at hand. It is, it is a good idea to have your um, documentation open and near you. Uh, you don't have to remember like specific names of functions you will get to remember them as the more you, you work in a particular language. Um, 
but chances are really good that you're going to jump between languages, you're going to jump between different like frameworks, uh, different APIs, will have different function names. Uh, you're always working with something new that you don't know anything about and getting in the habit of, of having all of your documentation ready is one of those like important muscle memory um, things when you are a developer of any kind. So uh, that is why, that is where we begin. <laughs> womp, womp, womp.